Hi guys, and welcome back to the Display Photographic Group. This is episode two, and it's concerning um, making a panorama. So taking four images in this case, and stitching them together in, in software to make a single image. Uh, if you enjoy it, please make a comment. Um, and those of you that watched episode one, uh, thanks for that. And thanks to those that have connected with us on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram, where you'll find us now. Up here, you'll find our website address. Um, we are a sales company producing photographic artwork. So please go take a look. I've uh, produced this video using Camtasia again. So thanks to them. I'm still testing it. So I imagine the name will be across the middle here. Um, but it looks good and you'll find that there's um, a talk over over the video that you're about to watch. So um, let's not hang about. Let's go watch that. See you soon. Thank you. OK, welcome. So this is the panorama um, on the Amalfi Coast. So just a bit of background. Um, it was a holiday to Italy in 19, uh, sorry, in 2019, and we went to the Bay of Naples. So here's Italy. The Bay of Naples is just up here. And we actually visited Sorrento on this Sorrento Peninsula, I think it's called. And if you visit Sorrento, you quite often will go to Pompeii or Vesuvius or the Isle of Capri or the Amalfi Coast. Um, we didn't do Vesuvius, but we travelled past it several times, so that's quite spectacular. So from Sorrento, this day we were going along the Malfi Coast, which is right, hugs the, the coastline. Great views across. And uh, we were going by coach, so we couldn't really stop where we wanted to stop, but we stopped obviously where we were, where the coach was planning to. And what I was expecting was something like this. This is photographs um, of the Amalfi Coast. Gorgeous colour in the, in the evening sky. Lights here. Something like this. Beautiful sunlight. Lots of different colours. I think you'll find that a lot of these are actually um, oversaturated because we didn't see anything like this and this is really what we were expecting um, but we were forced into the day that, that we took so for you um, Lightroom beginners out there I'm a Lightroom beginner really and let's hope I can give you some information that will help you try some things so you've just seen the pictures that I expected to get here are the pictures that I did get uh, these are all raw, so they haven't been adjusted. So you can see that fantastic views, but not that spectacular colouring that you would, you would think you, we would get. This is in a mouthy itself. This is looking back from the sea, obviously, onto a town. So really, really exciting. Um, wonderful to look at, but not that colour. Uh, and obviously what people do, if we look on the right here, is that they, they up this vibrance and, and saturation. So uh, even if I do it just a little bit, you can see that the colours here are being brought back. But the saturation just you know, mucks up the greens. So that's not the way to do it. Vibrance brings out everything. So I think there's a lot of that. And uh, to my eyes, it doesn't really look that real. So I've, I've kept away from doing too much of that. We went up to Ravello, which is 300 plus metres up in the mountains, where there was views. Um, and we saw this view looking down the coast. Um, and was interested in that, a grey sky, very cloudy. But was aware of this view when I was walking to the town of Ravello. So, you know, we had a walk around. I think we had a, a cup of coffee at one of the small places here. Struck some cats, obviously. 
But then when we were working out or making our way back to the coach, I decided that the view that I'd seen earlier would be worthwhile in a panorama. So here's my four pictures. Turn that off. So from left to right, across the mountains, and then down the coast. So those four together felt like they could actually be um, a good panorama. Quite often I do um, panorama portrait style, but I've, I've actually done these landscape so that the, uh, they'll end up being rather wide, I would assume. But there was nothing higher or lower that I felt with my um, lens. And I had on here, I had my 18 to 55 on my Canon 700D. Um, so what do I firstly do? Well, normally when I bring the photos into Lightroom, the two things I start with, I could develop. No, I've got library, is it develop? The two things I would start with is chromatic aberration and uh, the profile for my camera. So if you're not already doing that, I would suggest this. Sometimes I don't see the, um, the difference with clicking this remove chromatic aberration, but it certainly seems to be something that people do. So I would advise that. And when I bring them into Lightroom, I will actually do that for every single photo before I even start. So I've un undone them here just to show you. So if you click those two, I think when, when the profile correction goes, watch the screen. It's just straightening up, flattening off the picture for your particular camera. So in here, you choose the camera you have. So in me, it's Canon. And usually it will find the correct model. It will read the model that you're using. So once you've done that, if, if you haven't already done it, if you right click on the picture where you've done it, you can actually go to the develop settings and copy them. It will bring up all the settings that are correct for, for that. And if you say copy and then left click, and with shift right click to the other three when you right click on that go back to your settings and say paste settings so this these two ticks that i had on that will now be also across the all four so all four are actually um, starting from the same point now to get the panorama i've stayed as steady as possible, catch the, my horizon as clear as possible. And if I've done that, you can normally get the photos, as long as you've done a good enough overlap, to line up. So again, click the first one, with the shift button down, the last one, right click, and what we're going to do, we're going to do photo merge panorama. Photo merge panorama. And it will create the panorama for you. And there it is. So that's my four photographs. I quite like that. You can see where I haven't kept quite correct that there's some white. So you can crop it automatically like that. And then this is a photo that you will um, bring into Lightroom to do the rest of the work. So that is quite impressive, but there's elements of it I, I really don't like. There's some options up here. Um, spherical and cylindrical and perspective is way out of bonk didn't like that at all so i decided on cylindrical with this one and i'll tell it to merge those four photographs it'll start doing it up, up the top here will take a few seconds especially with a slow um, computer like mine okay so i've shortened the uh, time that it took there so that you weren't waiting and I'm left with my panorama. You can see there's another one down here, uh, which I fiddled about with earlier, which I shall show you at the end. But now we have our DNG file and our panorama that we're going to work with. So in develop, what do I normally do? First thing I normally do is look at the, uh, the crop tool. It's automatically cropped 
in order to get rid of the white areas and I will now do it for the photo that I want. So this is a very ugly roof here, so I'm going to take this to one side, just leaving a small amount of the roof so it reminds me that there was a roof. Unsure about this blank area, uh, but like the idea that this, the edge of the uh, coast here is on, on the third, I think I'll just take it in so that all of the, uh, the greenery is included. I think that looks quite good. You could bring this down, which I think, but I, I, I like those clouds. I think I'll leave those clouds in there. So we'll leave it like that. You could certainly bring it down so that the horizon is on the rule of thirds as well, but I'm going to leave it up like that. Quite like that. Let's get rid of these ones at the bottom. So what do I normally do? Um, my norm when I start, uh, I do have presets. If you don't already work on presets, I think all these top ones you get with it, which gives you an option to do to test out what it would look like as a starting position. So in color, they've got natural, bright, contrast, vivid, matte. And each one, if you click on it, will show you even actually if you go over it, it will highlight it will show you the difference. Vivid looks quite nice. Or even in black and white, you can choose something with punch, very flat, that's rather soft, there's a sepia. These tend to be starting places. So the raw file has, has nothing in it. So you need to uh, make some adjustments. So what do I normally do? Well, I do have presets that I use. I have presets that I've downloaded uh, for free for people. And I've had presets that I've paid for. But in general, my system now tends to be that I will down the highlights and up the shadows for almost every photograph I do. I will then look at the blacks and the whites. So by holding alt down, I will bring in some blacks. So those areas that you can see in yellow and, and, and darker than that, I don't know if it's black or green, that will be areas where there's no more information. But with blacks, I like to have some areas that are slightly black. Similarly with whites, press the Alt button, click on whites. If I go this way, these are the areas that will have no information because they're blown out. So bring that back so the sky's all gone until everything's so there's no areas that are completely blown out. Looks like there's a small area of white up there, so I will crop that. Like that. So you can see this is before and this is after. So there's already a slight difference, particularly with the clouds there. Um, I will then tend to put in a graduated filter top and bottom which will darken the top, darken the bottom, um, making more emphasis for the middle. So I will bring down the filter at the top and underexpose by something like 50 or 60 until I'm bringing some information in there that wouldn't normally be there. So in this particular place, it's these gorgeous clouds, which at the, at the time worried me but actually uh, improve this particular picture. And similarly, one up from the bottom that does the same. So that would be my norm, I'll say done, to emphasize something in the middle. In this particular case, I think that bottom bit is actually rather dark. So if I click back on graduated filter, I would say do the opposite and actually bring out the exposure on that. So I'll put it into the plus which is going to give me a little bit more insight here. 
I then would be taken aware of what I actually saw on the day. So what I saw on the day was clouds with gaps uh, and the light coming through on buildings, etc. Uh, the sea and the, the far coast. So how can I bring that back to what I saw in my eyes? So I use, quite often, a radial filter. I will place a radial filter over areas that I would want to um, usually highlight to bring out something that makes it far more interesting to the eye. So again, with something quite light, maybe 50 odd, I will draw an ellipse over here. And you can adjust the exposure to what you remember. So let's put some brightness there. And at the same time, in that area, you can improve something like texture or clarity. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clarity a little bit, texture just a little bit. Something similar, you can duplicate this and move that to another area. So here's an area here, I can twist that. Here's an area that being slightly brighter will bring out the tones in these houses. Because I duplicated it, there's a little bit of exposure, a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity. So let's just try the exposure slightly more. I quite like. Maybe something similar on the next town. A little bit brighter there. And this one that I liked, maybe something similar to that over the mountains in the distance. Let's have a look at the contrast. Contrast making it darker, darker, exposure. Maybe more texture in the distance. I quite like that. Now looking at that, I, I, I love this horizon. Maybe something in the, in the, uh, in the water here. What did I do? Click on my radial filter. This one. I think I'll just duplicate that into the water. It brings a, that a little bit of life there, a bit of interest. Now the only thing is where there was clouds, I can bring up the exposure on everything. But where those darker areas are, you can use the adjustment brush to do something similar. So the adjustment brush down here with the size, the feathering, I like a lot of feathering so it's not too obvious. And the flow is the amount that it will use. And you can just pass it over the areas that you think need brightening a tiny bit at a time. Now I like that. We'll say done. I think that's that's lifelike. Now we've got some colours that, that may be important. Let's go in. The colours of the roofs is obviously pertinent for that area. And I have this blue square that I didn't like. So your eye at the moment is brought forward to this, which we could cover. We, we could do a spot removal and we'll go over this. But I, that's, in my eyes, that reminds me that there was a roof there. But I'm not sure I like this blue spot. So I will go down to my luminance and look at these two colors. 
So orange first, this way to lighten, to the left to darken, brings that colouring that, that we all associate with that part. Now with the area of blue that I didn't like, we will try it with a, another radial filter purely over that area. And you can change the tone, uh, change the colouring of the blue, but with saturation, I think reduce that blue slowly, slowly, slowly until it sort of blends in with the colour of the church and the colour of these other areas of rock. I like that. Come back out. It certainly doesn't show on that now. Okay, um, I think just maybe the sea. Obviously the sea has got blue in it. I think we need to bring that up a little bit. both the luminance and possibly the colour make it slightly darker, which is the other way, without destroying anything in the sky. Click done. And looking at that, does that, does that feel, that feels managed, that feels like it fits. Sharpening is something we use, um, but I use with, with a mask normally. So again, prep Alt button will show you where will be sharpened. So to the left, if it's white, everything will be sharpened. To the right, only the very outlines that you need. So if you don't want everything sharpened, but the outlines is important. It would make a difference there. Let's have a look at the two. Brought out the clouds, brought out some of the areas of sunshine, the colour in the sky here and the sea here has come back and they are very, they match each other. And just made it a little bit lighter across the um, mountains. That's my Panorama from Ravello, looking down on, I think the town of Maori. There's another town in this bay here. And uh, this is the next town of Maori. Love in the distance. I'm pleased with that. Hope that helps chaps. We shall save that. I did say I would show you one that I'd already done, which is this one, where I did warm everything up and possibly oversaturate. I'll just stop there. Thank you.